by a child from my country. Enough for me to remain in my country's embrace, to be in her close as a handful of dust, a sprig of grass, a flower. My name is Renda Wahasim. I'm a new mother and a physical therapist living here in Maryland. I'm a proud Palestinian American from Gaza, the homeland of my mother. You're looking at a picture of our beloved cousin Ahmed Skaik, a dedicated husband and a loving father who is no longer with us. On October 10th, Israel ordered Ahmed's family to evacuate their home. Ahmed and his pregnant wife, Lina, as quickly as humanly possible, gathered all their belongings and their three and five-year-old daughters to flee to an area that was supposed to be a safe zone. Israel bombed the building next to them in this safe zone where they had seeked refuge. Pregnant Lena instinctively threw her pregnant body over her young daughters to try and protect them. Within minutes, Lena found herself in an ambulance with her daughters. And the only thing that consoled her, they were still alive. That being said, they were all heavily injured. Lena during an emergency C-section that was performed on Lena. She was without anesthesia. Lena had discovered that her long-awaited six-month-old fetus son, that Ahmed never got to see, 
was killed as the result of the injuries that she has sustained from the blast. In fact, doctors found shards and fragments from the explosions piercing all the way down into her uterus. Meanwhile, Ahmed was nowhere in sight. Ten hours later, his body was found under the rubble. The Israeli airstrike on the building in the safe zone murdered him. Shame! But that's not all. Ahmed was one of over 36 and counting since we have absolutely no, co no way to connect with our families in the north. They were all buried under the rubble within that month. Those who survived from my family and those that I continue to stay in communication with as much as we can also endure the daily torture. Israeli soldiers abducted another one of my cousins and his family at gunpoint, stripped them down naked, and brutally tortured them and humiliated them as they fled south to seek refu refuge from the violence in the north while they were walking down the humanitarian passages. That being said, just before they were even able to flee and leave the north, his six-year-old son endured a gunshot wound with a bullet that stayed in his forearm that was raising the white flag. They were following every single order to pass through safely. And yet, he had to walk with his mother after his father was abducted. A 10-hour walk on foot. A six-year-old boy with a gunshot wound in his forearm that carried the white flag that they were asked to to make sure that they stay safe but it's all lies on lies! I am here today and I'm very honored to be standing in front of a crowd of people with conscience, with people who are ready to speak truth to power. And I'm here to say, no more. No more over tax paying dollars to bomb our homes, kill our families, torture. And Eden and his administration is to say, now. No more military funding to Israel. No more. No more. The people of Gaza are just like you and I. My message today for everybody who's new to the Palestinian struggling is to look every day in the mirror and say, it could have been me. It could have been my family. These people are just like me. They deserve to live without humiliation, without the constant threat of bombardment, without the constant threat of a deliberate and intentional starvation on the grounds of Gaza, and finally without the constant threat of their bodies being ripped apart to pieces on their last day on earth. And again, I would like to finalize with May peace be upon you, may peace be with Palestine and the people of Gaza. Long life Palestine. Salam alaikum DC. Children. The youngest 
was just a few months old. In the weeks leading up to their deaths, they suffered immensely. Two of my relatives left their home to find desperately needed food. They came back to discover that Israel had bombed their home and that their mother, father, sister were all killed and buried under the rubble. Shame! As the surviving brothers desperately dug through the rubble by hand for the dismembered body parts of their family members, of their parents, of their beloved sister, Israel dropped another bomb on their house, killing both of the brothers as they dug for their family. Yasser and Ru'a were two siblings, aged 6 and 14, whose dead bodies were only removed from their demolished home a few days ago. One month! after an Israeli airstrike killed them in their home. Their younger brother, who was only a few years old, was the one who discovered their bodies. He sobbed into his mother's arms as he told her, their eyeballs are decayed. Their eyes are emptied from their sockets. This is the lasting memory he has of his two older siblings. Hundreds of my family members are now sleeping on cardboard in the cold streets. Many of us are taking refuge in hospitals and in schools. One of my family members is 81 years old and he froze to death in the street. Damn. because they are starving to death, surrounded by Israeli soldiers who refuse them access to water and food and medication. They are begging for their lives. The hospitals and schools that hundreds of my family members are sheltering in have nevertheless been targeted by Israeli airstrikes. Many have been killed in these hospitals and schools. My aunt, Samar, went out in search of life-saving medication for my mentally disabled uncle. He's been on medication his entire life. For the first time in his life, he is off of it. He's facing severe withdrawal symptoms, seizure-like symptoms, convulsions. When she went out to find medication for him, she was shot at by Israeli tanks. She witnessed others in the street killed right in front of her eyes. It could have been her. This is the same aunt who has been volunteering, giving everything she has to help others. She goes to Anarwa schools, asks, what do your children need? She goes out, finds it, and gives it to the mothers whose children are freezing in the street. Their hearts remain pure. When I visited Gaza last year, my aunt made a handmade soap for me, but I wasn't able to take it back with me. When my grandparents evacuated just a couple of days ago, they faced severe, severe hardship at the Ma'abar in Rafah. And still, even in the 18-hour ordeal of trying to get two elderly people out, my aunt remembered to send my soap with my grandparents. She told me if I can't make it out of Gaza alive, at least the Thob can make it out alive. And you will have something to remember me by. She's preparing me for her death. Nothing remains for the survivors. Where once there were streets, businesses, and buildings with the Al-Aha name emblazoned on them including my own home, my grandmother's centuries-old home. There's now only dust. For the sake of
of the surviving members of my family desperately clinging to life. We need an immediate and permanent ceasefire now! 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 A permanent ceasefire means a free Palestine! An end to the illegal occupation! Thank you all for coming out. As we begin today, we will be instructing people who are ready to pray Salat al-Dhuhr and Salat al-Asr. We will be praying on the... Uh, we brought them with them. We brought them with them.
African American history museum. Okay, I think I called him. 
Now tell me, how did you feel the day that you went down to Washington, D.C. for the Palestinian uh, march that was down there, the demonstration that was about what was going on in the Gaza, the uh, genocide that was happening? How did you feel that day? Hmm. I felt good to see that uh, as many people showed up, to, even to the weather the way it was, which is very good. So if people don't let the weather stop them from what they want to do, for what they want. So what they want, they just showed them those that they were um, protesting to as uh, to what's going on and that they will, will do what they need to do to get what they need and want, mm -hmm. which I thought was very well. Good. Plus the people's behavior was very, very nice. Good, good, there was good. no problem amongst the people in the, uh, who lived there, mm -hmm. down there, and those uh, of us who were visiting come on, on the buses. Did worked you, very well. Mm -hmm. Did you see Joe Sims down there, the guy who was um, usually on Good Morning America and um, Good Morning Revolution, and uh, the fellow who was riding around in the electric chair? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, he, I'm glad to see him out and doing what he's doing, because uh, uh, you know, don't let your health take you down where you don't need to be. You focus on something else at all. How are the signs down there? Hmm? How are the signs down there? The signs? Yeah. Um, I can't um, think of, of one I can tell you what was on it, but it was nice and big letters, and um, you can see it <clears throat> a few feet away from them. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just nice. There's a lot of, lot of signs up, a lot of signs up, which is really good, you know. Would so, you do it again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy I enjoyed myself. It's the first time I've been to... Washington for something like that. But I enjoyed myself there, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I, I sort of pushed myself, but I pushed myself and figured, I said, you go on, go on, go on. If you don't go, you're going to be beating yourself <laughs> for a long, long time. So very, very, very good. Trip. How were the people who were in the bus? How was what? How were the people who were on the bus? Uh, they were friendly. They mind their business and we mind ours. So it was